Yes, guys. Yes, people. Welcome back to another match preview. The second of two that will hopefully be dropping today. This will be where the fun ends because after this, we actually have to go through the 90 minutes of what is going to be terrible football. Minimal tactics. Spaces exposed everywhere. Poor finishing left, right and center. Awful set pieces. And... I guess someone might win at the end of it, but I think there's going to be a lot of losers coming out coming out of this game. But big up to my guest. Rance, it is great to have you back on the channel. It's been a minute. I hope everything's good, bro. Yeah, obviously. Aside from football, everything's good, isn't it? United are useless at the moment. And this is this is the weirdest feeling for me. Like usually when Man United and Chelsea are playing each other, they're playing for something. Do you know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. It's it's weird. It's weird to me, bro. Do you know what I mean? The last FA Cup final I was at was against Chelsea. It's just like, hey, bro, we're not even playing for trophies anymore. Not really. Do you know what I mean? It's it's a weird feeling. Like, this, well, I don't know where we like, I think we're sick for something and you're like... 11, like, 12. 11. No, we're 12. You see what I mean? It's like, this is Again. the most meaningless game that we've played each other in a long time. That's what this fixture is now. It's just reminiscing. Every time mm. I get this fixture, it's like, yeah, remember when this used to be for the title? This used to be a Champions League final back in the day. Now it's just a straight mid-off. And mm. even then, it's like, well, we're still underperforming even the mid-off. Like, now we're back in 12th going no, into this game. The only thing that saved us is that Nottingham Forest beat Fulham. So we didn't go oh, into this did. game first. Okay. Okay. That's yeah, Palace that. didn't beat Bournemouth. So... That's pulled us up. A result in this game, I think it gets us back into 10th, does it? Yes, it does, because Wolves, drew. Wolves, I think, lost to Burnley. Or they drew. Okay. They drop points regardless. So if we win this one, we're back on page one of the Premier League. You've been really going between 10th and everywhere else for like most of the season, bro. 10th seems to be that spot that you guys are just stuck in. Yeah, because we can't build a run to save our lives. I feel like our manager can't even spell run with the way he handles some of these press conferences. Yeah. But I, I I, don't know if we even get ourselves back up there because after that Burnley game, all of my hopes have faded. Like, I'll be so real. I, I need some hope from this game. So that was the first question I was going to ask for you. You got anything that can help me feel a little bit more optimistic for this game? Because I've even seen your injuries. I've seen Lissandro's now on the shelf. And Lindelof. with Lindelof, with yeah. Varane. And I'm thinking... I think Varane will play, you know. I think Varane... Well, Varane went off injured last game, but I don't think he was injured still. Like I believe that the manager just took him off um, because he went straight to the bench. You don't see players get injured and be sitting on the bench like in the second half. Usually they're getting treatment or something like yeah. that. He was just sitting on the bench in his jacket, didn't have an ice pack on or anything like that. So I expect him to start. I expect him to be okay. I, I, I wasn't really sure about that substitution because he was our best player before he went off. But I expect Varane to play tonight. I'll be surprised if he doesn't. I think it'll be him and Johnny Evans probably, which is our best centre-back partnership, to be fair, like mm -hmm. this season so far. So I don't know, man. I'll take Varane and Evans. I saw some reports saying that he was he's pulled himself out of fixtures for the rest of the season. Who? I don't know if I got that wrong or anything. Who's that? Varane. He said he pulled himself out of results for the rest of the season. Although Ten Hogs just said in his press conference that he's back in training today. So that might have been BS. Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah, I think it was nonsense, bro. Like they said that he was suffering concussion symptoms or something like that. So yeah, they were probably looking deeper into that. But um, yeah, I didn't hear any anything about him pulling himself out. He'll want to play. Ah, oh, so Varan back as well. Okay, great. Mm. Great. There goes that hope then, because I was thinking Maguire and Evans, there might be a little chance, because I, I do think we might dominate the game. We might, just with the home advantage. No, I think you that will dominate could... the game. We don't keep the ball well. We haven't kept the ball well against anyone. So I expect you to dominate the ball. Um, and it's just whether you can be clinical or not. Do you know what I'm saying? Because we don't create a lot of chances, but we tend to take the odd one. Do you know what I mean? So... I know, I know, but I just can't really shake the performance that we had at Old Trafford. Because I, I know exactly what it's like watching you guys. I've seen enough Manchester United games. I went into that game confident and we couldn't play. The, we couldn't get the ball out of our own half. Mm -hmm. Every time we tried to just Amrabat or McTominay and then you go through, you make a chance. And like your attack was still your attack that day. Yeah. But you were cooking us. So I think if we can let Man United do that to us, 
Like United are capable of getting a result in general, but yeah, but it was with the like that. crowd though. Like Stamford Bridge is a different ball game whatsoever. You're gonna have the crowd on side now. United at Old Trafford are a different football team. Like they saw you saw that in the FA Cup when we beat Liverpool. Like it was nothing to do with coaching or the players. The crowd, bro, just energized these guys and gave them like the extra half a yard, bro. And Old Trafford does that. Do you know what I mean? But at Stamford Bridge, we're not gonna have the crowd behind us to to um, propel us forward. So I don't think it's going to be the same kind of vibe as, as the first game. I think the one thing you could do to like try and nullify our fans in a sense or to st not give them an excuse to be up for it because like the atmosphere around Stamford Bridge has been terrible this season. The one thing you could do, you shouldn't start Mount. shouldn't start Mount I don't, at I don't all going into this anyway. game. I don't think we will. Cause that not even on a rotation thing. thing. Okay. Good, because no, no. I was I was speaking to this with Flawless and Saeed earlier. I was saying, if you guys start him, you've given the fans a reason to get up for this game. Because they're going to be on it from the first minute. They're going to be booing him. And then, they're, and then when he starts misplacing passes or a result of it, because it will get into his head, you're yeah, going to get the fans, the fans more, man. You don't want to yeah. give these guys any reason, yeah, to get behind the team any more than they need. Do you know what I mean? Like, starting Mount could, would work against us. I'm not. Even though McTominay's absolute, oh man, he's dog, yeah. But I think starting Mount would be a bad idea because, yeah, they'll be they'll be booing the life out of him and stuff like that. It would just it would fully inject some energy into the Chelsea crowd. I think we need to keep them as silent as possible. Yeah, and I think that's the number one way you do it because I've I've already seen the PR coming out for Mason Mount. I don't know if you've seen any of that. So apparently, like, there's been sources saying that he was viewed as the perfect solution to generate a much-needed cash injection at Chelsea. He was disappointed by the characterization he left us for financial reasons when, according to sources, the decision was made above his head. Um, the departure is still raw, which is why he's purposefully done almost no interviews since joining Man United. And he's found the transition difficult to navigate. He's been keen to win over the fans as quickly as possible, while also trying to remain respectful to the Chelsea supporters he left behind. Huh? What do you mean he was made above weird. his head? He wanted more money, and he got it. You know what I'm saying? And it was a PR exactly. thing as well, bro. He wanted to go Man United. Do you know what I mean? I think um, this guy's trying to do the David Beckham thing. That's just all it is. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, the guy, and from what I've heard, I think his PR company is the same one. So yep, the, sa the same one as Beckham, Drogba, Czech, all of that. And I think they work closely with United too. But there you go. So this was always the plan. He didn't leave Chelsea for footballing reasons. He left there for vanity reasons. And I wish we didn't sign him. I think he's useless. So yo, yo, you, you and me both, man. I've been trying to, I've been trying to beat that drum for the last year. I just don't get why he's still trying to pedal out this PR to appeal to Chelsea fans when you've already left and you're at a rivals club. Like, bro, focus on your new club. Sure. Focus on United. You're saying you've purposefully done no interviews because since leaving Chelsea because you still feel a bit sour about yeah, it. Like I'm a United playing. fan hearing that. Yeah, but he hasn't been playing. Nobody wants to hear from a player that's not playing. So literally, you're saying you haven't done interviews. How many opportunities have you had to do interviews? You've been injured for the whole season. Nobody wants to hear anything. People just want to see you play football. I'll, I'll say that even when he was at Chelsea and was going through the injury stuff, we were hearing things on a weekly basis. I'm just mm. not surprised it's dropped the day before match day. The, the same guy who leaked the whole PR stuff about Mason now is the same guy who told us two days ago, expect some PR to drop. Mm. Here you are the day after. So as long as you guys don't play Mason Mount, I, I don't really expect anything from, from us in terms of um, the atmosphere, unless we bag a goal early. And even if we do, my biggest worry is the second half with us because we always love conceding a late goal. Like hmm. for me, this game screams one-one all over. We yeah. might get an early goal because like, I back our attack. Our attack seems to get goals, even if that Burnley game was an embarrassment. But defensively, we ain't it. Uh, what are you guys like on set pieces? It's hard to say, bro, because we, bro, we've conceded as many goals as we scored. That's why our goal difference is zero. So I think we scored forty, conceded forty. Yeah. yeah. So. So, yeah, we're rubbish, isn't it? Like, I think we're rubbish at everything. I'll be real. And it's, I, I think defense, I think set piece wise, we shouldn't be too bad from what I remember because our actual defenders are defending well. It's our lack of midfield cover and the gaps that Bruno McTominay leave. So, 
I think the reason why we can see this many goals is because the defence gets exposed in transition. But from set pieces, I don't remember us being that bad from set pieces. Okay, okay. Well, let's hope we don't give you anything to go off in that. But game we don't score many from them either. So, you know what I mean? So, we, we concede so many from set pieces. Like, we do the whole zonal marking crap, and it's so easy for teams to get chances against us. Burnley nearly won the game against us off another set piece. They had about yeah. three, four opportunities before their equalizer, and they were all coming from set pieces. Oh, boy, I don't know. I'm just thinking, who have we got that can exploit that? I know Cass scores quite a few from set pieces but that's really it to be honest we're your center really backs maybe off a corner yeah, or something yeah we're not maybe really a a threat. we're not really a threat from set pieces i don't know what hoyland's really scored... like in terms of aerial threat nah, he's, he's rubbish in the air um mctominay scores from arriving late in the box a lot like but from a standing jump i don't really think he's much of a threat i don't know there yeah set pieces ain't really our thing but i don't know what is our thing to be honest because we're just rubbish at everything no with us it's the pmp palmer and prey that's what our manager's been saying Give mm. the ball to Cole Palmer, hope he does something, and past that, those players are left out to fend for themselves. All we I do in training, a player is... like Cole Palmer, that we could give the ball to and hope they do something. Do you know what I mean? We used to be able to do that with Pogba, and now we can't do that. I know. It's like at least we have one saving grace with him. But to me, I also just think like, okay, so if we didn't have Cole Palmer, I'm literally here in a relegation scrap. <laughs> well, I'm here just trying, trying not to get involved in it. Maybe five points off the drop. Hmm. Yeah, it's not it's looking good. long, bro. It's not looking but in good. terms, in terms of the season, a win for you guys pulls you about six points behind Tottenham, mm. with about eight games left to play. With their running, do you feel like you could get yourself into the top five by the end of the season, or do you think that consistency is way too much to ask for for you guys? Yeah, yeah, we're not consistent. Um, and honestly, players will be looking at life after this manager. Man, I'm pretty confident he's gone. So. I can't see the players digging us out of this hole, bro. I really can't. Um, like you said, consistency is asking too much, bro. This is Man United. Like, beat, um, mm. beat Liverpool, draw with Brentford. Should have lost to Brentford. Do you know what I mean? This is the same team. The same team that beat Liverpool. And this is the problem. So, you can't ask for consistency from Man United. We've lost 11 games in the league. I, I hear it. I hear it. Although, to be honest... Thinking about with a new manager, you might actually be better off being in the Europa League next season. It's a, it's a much more winnable competition. It's two mm. routes into the Champions League. Like you go into the Champions League, like you'd have to have a brazy summer window because you're looking at the whole team, and I'm thinking eighty percent of them could be gone. I would love that to be the case. I'd love us to do a clear out like Chelsea, but I don't think we are. We're getting linked with a lot of young. Young players, like young centre-backs, um, young midfielders. And I'm feeling that this is going to be like a project over two two to three summer windows to turn us into the club that um, we're going to be in it. I don't think it's going to be like a massive, like four in, four, um, four out, four in, or like five out, four in, even though I believe that's what we need. I believe we need to get rid of about four or five players and then bring in about three or four because we need to cut our squad size as well. We need to cut our squad size. Our squad's way too big. Like I think when Poch went to Chelsea, the first thing he said was, yo, the squad's too big. And Yeah, we were the... already planning that clear out before he even joined. Although yeah. I think the way it's come out for us now, even though I think the manager plays such a big responsibility in it, the way it's come out for us, I don't think a lot of teams are going to try that again. I think it was the right thing to do. I just think that... I agree. You just but didn't like, have I the right manager in place. You didn't have the right you didn't have the right patience with the right manager. That's all it was. When you do a clear out like that, you need a manager that is a, a very rigid system-based manager, bro. Do you know what I mean? That's gonna stick to yeah. it. Like, this is the kind of that's the kind of you would have been better off having sorry if he was gonna do something like that. Because he would have got these guys playing some cohesive football and they would develop as players in a system and Throughout the season, these players will get more confident and they'll just improve. But th these guys just look lost when I watch Chelsea. Like Nobody knows where they're supposed to be, what they're supposed to do. And it's like, all these players are playing their own game. It's weird. We, have, we both have the same thing. We've got managers with awful tactics or no tactics and they just prioritise <laughs> intense training sessions, which re-injures everybody. That's yeah. why you got Lissandro now on the bench again. Mm, he's out for another month. 
Another month. Mm. I, I don't even know if it's a thing where he's an injury crock or anything. I think it's just a training. I think I it's keep, both. I, keep... I think it's Yo, both. You think it's a bit of both of them? I think it's a bit of both because it's different injuries. Now it's his cough. And before it was the knee and stuff like that. And I just think these guys get rushed back too quickly, man. They get rushed yeah, back too quickly. Labia. Yeah, Labia got dragged back body. to the Palace game because Enzo had a groin injury. And yeah. we had no other, no other midfielders to go for. And we couldn't beat Palace. So Poch is mm. like, yeah, cool. You can play 30 minutes. And we haven't seen the guy since. This is the and problem, Kuku, man. the same thing. As James much as kind got, of the same thing. As much as they've got all of this sports science and all these things, yeah, these guys are rushing back footballers, brother, and they're ruining their careers, man. They're ruining their careers because footballers, most of the time, they need more time. Like, forget all the science and the medicine and that, bro. Like, your body just needs rest. And also... You build up all these muscle imbalances and stuff like that from injuries, and you have to, bro, you have to be careful with them. But because footballers are commodities, yeah, and there's money to be made, they just keep getting rushed back. The best thing that Reese James can do, yeah, is probably just take a whole year out and just make sure, yeah, that his body, he ain't got no muscle imbalances, he ain't got any of these problems, yeah, and he just makes sure he strengthens everywhere and sorts everything out. Because you're better off taking a year out. So you can play three, four years without injuries or being out for a year in total over three, four years or whatever, bro. Because he's like, he's always missing football. Now, Lissandro's like, played 11, 11 last season. Now he's fit. Brother, 11 games out of 40, Lissandro's played this season. That's crazy. 11. And last season, it was less than that. So since we've signed him, yeah, he's missed more than 50% of the games for us. That's crazy. That's 11 insane. games like, out of 40, bro. Yeah, that's 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 close to what Reese James is on. And that's I hear it like starts, Reece, from Cuckoo, Lavi, <laughs> I don't want to see either of them back for the remainder of the season. Where we finish no is where we finish and the season's already in the bin. I don't need to risk them again just to get seventh. I don't need that. And then we True. never see them again there on six-year deals. That crap is long. But just before we wrap up... um. What's your score prediction, bro? The way we're playing, to be honest, I can't see us. I can't see us winning the game. So it's a draw or a loss, isn't it? It depends on. I honestly believe the score depends on what Chelsea turns up because I know what United's going to turn up. They're going to be useless. So it depends. If I see, if I see, um, I know what Cole Palmer's going to do. But if I see Raheem Sterling look like he's on it, Jackson look like he's on it, then bro, we 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 could lose still. I'll be honest, but. I'm going to go with a score draw. I'm probably going to say... I don't think I'm going to go for 2-2, two, two, you know? like I think it's going to be a game of... Just, Hear it. Yeah, it's just going to be a game of rubbish. Like, do you know what I mean? Both teams looking vulnerable. Um, both teams not really creating too many clear-cut chances. But, yeah, I think both teams will score. And I think it'll be a draw. I'm thinking 1-1. One, one. Like, I don't even think either teams are going to have the shooting boots on like that for this. It's just going to absolutely stink. We'll get the early goal and then we'll drop back 10 yards because our manager's just shook and he does that every single time we take a lead. You guys will get an assist. I think Mal actually gets an assist when he comes off the bench, but he'll be off a corner because we'll concede off a set piece. And like he'll be he'll be doing the volume crossing like he always does. He'll end up finding somebody. Yeah, Bruno and... lets him take it. Do you know what I mean? It'd be interesting. I don't know if Mount's allowed to take corners for us because he hasn't even played. So I don't even know if he takes set pieces for us. I remember he was taking free kicks at one point when he was starting, but I don't know if he's on the corners as well. But he might actually. Well I don't think they'll let him do it anyway because he'll have to go to the Chelsea fans to do that. Oh, that's mad. That'd be interesting. Yeah, I don't think they'll do that. That's actually a sharp. I still think you concede off a corner. Well, we mm -hmm. do. So I'm going to go 1 1 Chelsea. But, man, them, it's been a great preview, as always. I'm sure all of you, man, are already sub to rants, but to the 0.1% in here who, who haven't, everybody head over. The link is going to be on the title. The link will be in the description as well. And, yeah, guys, just, just pray for the club because we need all the prayers and hopes we can get right now. And let's hope both of us get our Independence Day in the summer because I want to see both our clubs back at the top where we should be. I grew up on Chelsea v Man United being the rivalry. Where we are right now is an absolute disgrace. But big up to everybody. Hit the like button, subscribe, all of that. I will see you guys soon.